Hello, welcome to this lesson of the AC Circuit Analysis Tutor. Uh, here we're going to talk about series and parallel circuits in the phasor domain. So remember a long time ago we learned what to do when resistors are in series and what to do when, when resistors are in parallel. We learned how to simplify all that stuff for resistors. Now we're going to apply it to when we have capacitors and inductors uh, with AC sources, which means we can use the phasor techniques in complex numbers, and you'll find that everything is very familiar to you. So, uh, for series impedances, you might guess that if you have a impedance and an impedance and an impedance, meaning maybe an inductor, an inductor, and a capacitor, and a resistor all in series, then the equivalent impedance of the whole thing uh, is basically going to be the impedance of the first device plus the impedance of the second device plus the impedance of the third plus dot 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 however many you have in series. This is exactly what we have for resistors. If you have resistors end to end in series you just add them up and so we have exactly the same analog once we understand this impedance concept. So you can see why everything looks so familiar. Now if this is true you might also guess that for parallel uh, impedance, all right, you might guess that one over the equivalent impedance uh, is equal to one over the first impedance plus one over the second impedance plus one over the third uh, impedance, Z sub three, plus dot dot dot. This is exactly what it was for resistors. What I mean by parallel is Here's a resistor, here's a resistor, here's a resistor, and they're all connected in parallel with some source. If you're looking at the parallel arrangement, that's exactly what we did for resistors. One over R1 plus one over R2 plus one over R3. That thing is equal to one over the equivalent resistance. So if you have three or four or five or six uh, items in parallel, they could be resistors, they could be capacitors, they could be inductors, or any combination then you just apply this straight out. It's just that every item you have is going to be an impedance. Of course, that'll depend on the frequency, but you'll calculate the impedance for whatever source that you have, whatever frequency you have, and just apply this guy. So this is true of all cases when we have uh, parallel, uh, any number of parallel arrangements. But remember, there's a special case um, if just two impedances in parallel then this whole thing reduces to something a little easier. We've done this for resistors. It's product over sum. So it would be Z1 times Z2 over Z1 plus Z2. And this is again exactly like resistors. This guy, the, the full glory is, is useful if you have four, five, six items, three items, four items in parallel with one another. That's how you would do it. But very frequently in circuits you have two guys in parallel, one resistor in parallel with another. What this is saying is that the same rule applies if you have an inductor in parallel with a capacitor or a resistor in parallel with a capacitor. Any two items, if it's just two of them, this thing can be shown to reduce to this, product of the impedances over the sum of the impedances. So again, everything that you've learned about circuit analysis with series and parallel arrangements have been shown here to really be exactly true when you're dealing with impedances in the phasor domain. So here we're going to use these, these facts to try to solve a problem. What if we have, here's a source, call it V sub S, and then let's say we have a 90 ohm resistor right here, and then let's say we have an inductance, and then let's say we have a capacitance, and then this is all connected back around to the source. 